The name is mine. The name got my daddy's blood on it. Now she wanna go. She she she, she can go wherever she wanna go. But the name belongs to me. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Mac Lessons Radio Show. I'm your host, Mr. Tariq King Flex Nasheed, also known as TN, that nigga. And I'm glad to have everybody tuning back into the show. Today's show is brought to you by MacLessons.com. That's where you can get the Mac Lessons DVD, and for the time only, for this month only, rather, it's going to be only nine bones. You can get the Mac Lessons DVD right now for nine damn dollars. You can't beat that with a baseball bat, bitch. Also, at MacLessons.com, you can register for the show, the pay-per-view special that we have going on on March 1st called Mac Lessons in Brazil. That's where I'm going to be down in Brazil Chopping Up Game, it's a pay-per-view video special, one-hour special, 10 Bones to check that out. March 1st is when it's going to premiere. Check that out. Register right now. And also today's show is brought to you by OfficialUPA.com. That's the UnitedPlayersOfAmerica.com website. That's where you can chop it up with other players such as yourself. Now, on today's show, I'm going to give you tips on All-Star Weekend. All-Star Weekend is coming up in Las Vegas next weekend. And I'm going to give you some tips on how to get your game on, how to maintain, how to stay on top of your game, and how to keep it mackish. But before I get into that, let me touch on a couple of things that's happening in the news and the media right now. Um, yesterday I did the show talking about the Anna Nicole Smith case that's still going on. That's a very intriguing case, man. It's like a real life soap opera. Very deep case, man. There's all types of guys coming out talking about they're the father of the late Anna Nicole's baby. There's baby daddies coming out the goddamn woodworks. People trying to get that's the million dollar baby, basically, because th- that baby is going to probably inherit a lot of money. You ain't never seen them other motherfuckers coming out talking about they're the baby daddy. They're going to have to call Maury Povich in this bitch. So I'm going to keep an eye out on that case and keep everybody posted on what's going on and my opinions about that. But if you want my opinion, check out yesterday's show. Also, today, Saturday, February, what's the date today? February 10th, they had the Black State of the Union on C-SPAN today. It was a very good presentation. It's a very good presentation. You had Tavis Smiley. You had um, Cornell West on there. You had Chuck D. Everybody was just really breaking the game down. I love to see black intellectuals just chopping up good game. It was a very good presentation. The only thing I didn't like is when Cornell West, in the brilliant Cornell West, he's a very brilliant brother, he had a little criticism for Barack Obama saying that Barack Obama should have been there at the Black State of the Union because Barack Obama was in Springfield, Illinois today putting in his bid for a presidency. And Cornell West kind of made a point of that giving him a little a slight criticism it wasn't a major diss or nothing like that he just gave him a little criticism for not showing up knowing that the black state of the union was coming up and I have to disagree with Dr. Cornell West because 
Barack Obama needs that white money. And he needs to appeal to the white consensus. That's just the bottom line. He's going to appeal to the black consensus, definitely. But he really needs to put his bid in with these white folks. That's going to get him elected. That's the bottom goddamn line. And it's going to be difficult enough for him being a black man to try to get his bid in and, and get white folks to really get on his side because Barack Obama could come up with the cure for AIDS, cancer, and every living disease known to man. But people will still see race. White people will still see, okay, well, Dan, that's a black dude, though. He's brilliant as hell. He's come up with cures for every disease, but shit, he's black. They'll, they'll hold on to that shit. So he really has to represent his game thoroughly and try to squash that racial shit out of the the consciousness of the white minds in this country. He has to squash that as much as possible. He's not going to eradicate that at all, but he needs to squash it as much as possible. So I I won't criticize him on that. He's doing his thing and I hope everybody supports that brother. But I digress. So anyway, we're going to talk about tips for All-Star Weekend. Now, All-Star Weekend is going on in Las Vegas this year. So, fellas, you got to have your game on. You got to have your game tight. And there's a few things that you got to watch out for. Now, first of all, you got to watch out for events that's hip-hop themed And All-Star is usually a hip-hop themed event because there's going to be a lot of hip-hop parties. I know Jermaine Dupri and Nelly, they're having a big party. A lot of different DJs are having parties. When you have a young black crowd, that's a hip-hop crowd. And you got to be careful because hip-hop attracts hood rats. And I emphasize younger crowd because... On the black state of the union today There were mostly older black people So everything was cool But when you have young black folks That's when we have a problem Am I politically Incorrect for saying this? Yes Am I telling the truth? Yes And I spit the truth here Because I want brothers to survive I don't want you cats to get mixed up in no shit That's why I'm kicking the real to you Now The females that you will most likely be dealing with next weekend are going to be hood rats. Hip-hop attracts hood rats. Bottom line, let's not pretend it doesn't. Now, there are going to be a few dimes sprinkled here and there. But generally, you're going to be dealing with every type of hood rat in the country. Those Midwestern hood rats and those Southern hood rats, which are the worst ones. The Midwestern rats and the Southern rats are the absolute worst ones because they really stand out. It's that deep-rooted hood radishness. So you want to avoid that at all costs, fellas. Also, the problem with the hood rats, man, is half of the problem of the women. The other half is going to be the thirsty-ass niggas who chase these women. There's going to be a bunch of broke-ass niggas out there boosting the egos and the confidence of these hood rats. You're going to see a whole bunch of broads who look like the shit from the movie Baps. You're going to see a whole bunch of chicks who look like they should be on Jerry Springer or Maury Povich. You're going to see a whole bunch of that shit. You're going to see females with gold teeth, gaudy-ass outfits, ice cream cone hairstyles, ghetto tattoos you're going to see a lot of that fellas you want to do your best to avoid that again picking a dime out of all-star weekend is like going you're going whale hunting during guppy season there's a lot of guppies but you can't get the big fish because you got to avoid and move and manipulate your way through all the guppies and you want to get the big fish it can be done it will be a little more work So the name of the game is avoidance. You have to know what to avoid, what to stay away from. Again, 
avoid all the broke ass niggas with the video cameras running up and down Las Vegas Boulevard fawning over lackluster females also avoid those blatantly ghetto broads it's a waste of time also avoid attention whores blatant attention whores because 90% of the women that go to All Star Weekend are attention whores You know, you're trying to get your freak on and you got women out here who are walking around in stank outfits trying to get noticed by niggas. So you want to avoid that. That's the waste of time, fellas. Whenever you go to like Freak Nick or Spring Break and women are just walking around with these little stank outfits complaining that all the niggas are hollering at them, acting like they're so aggravated that all these men are running up to them. These women know what they're doing. They know what they did when they put the outfit on. They knew the kind of reaction they were going for. So you don't want to get around these self-bullshitting women. Because you're going to get a bunch of low-budget strippers from all over the country, hood rat strippers, in their stripper outfits running up and down the casinos and running up and down the street getting attention from men and at the end of the night they're going to go back to the room and eat each other out. You dig what I'm saying? So you don't want to get into no attention whore relishing at all. You want to go for the female who's the most conservative out of the group. You want to go for a female who's somewhat low key. The cute women, the dimes who are low key about this shit. Not the woman with her titties and butt cheeks hanging out. That's a total waste of time. Women like that rarely be giving up their ass. And if they do, they're selling their ass for $30, $40. And you're not there to trick. You feel what I'm saying? You're going to go for the conservative-looking female who's in a group of five or less. The reason why you want to go for a low group of women, because women who are in like 15, 20 groups of women, those are 15, 20 groups of women who are going to be cock blocking your game. So the least amount of females in a group, the least amount of females are going to be cock blocking your game. You don't want to be spitting good game in a woman and you got 14 other broads in her ear telling her why she shouldn't be coming back to your room. Because that's your objective. Your objective is to get a female to come up to your room and kick it with you. And handle business with you. So again, like I said, you want to avoid the attention whores. Avoid hanging around groups of thirsty ass niggas. And keep your game on point. And also watch out for law enforcement, man. Because, you know, whenever there's a lot of niggas. Law enforcement already prepared they're already prepared to lock niggas up up there they expect a whole i mean all the casinos are sold out i mean all the um hotels are sold out up there so they expect niggas to show out so they're getting jails ready for any kind of bullshit that's going to jump off got it also fellas watch out for the groupies man a lot of women a lot of the sisters, man, they, the reason they go to All-Star Weekend is because they have athlete fantasies. In the back of their minds, they think that they're going to go to All-Star Weekend, meet Allen Iverson or Robert Ory or Kobe Bryant or somebody, and they're going to save them. A lot of women still have that in their minds. A lot of women go to All-Star Weekend for that reason. They have that in the back of their minds. They're thinking that some athlete, they're going to meet an athlete. They're going to be so fly. They're going to go up there and meet an athlete. And the athlete is going to save them. They got Cinderella fantasies. So you don't want to get mixed up with a female who has that bullshit Cinderella fantasy going on. Unless you just tell some big bold ass lies. And that's the only time I would advocate lying is if you're just trying to get your one night stand on. Now, I suggest if you are going to lie, fellas, and there are a lot of you that are, don't tell the common little bitty lies like you're a rapper, you're a producer, 
you're a photographer. I mean, those are common lies that everybody's used to hearing. If you're going to tell a lie, man, you got to be bold about your shit. Tell these women that you got signed to the NBA. You're an NBA player. Tell them you just got signed to the Lakers. Tell them that you're part owner of the Lakers. Tell them you are a general manager for the New York Knicks. I mean, you got to have a real good lie going on. You got to tell the biggest, boldest lie you can tell. If you're going to tell a lie. Because bigger lies are actually easier to believe. Because it's hard to believe that somebody would tell a lie that big. It's easy to tell a small lie, but if you commit to a big lie, people kind of take it more seriously. So you meet a female up there in Las Vegas, man, and shit. Just tell them you're Barack Obama's son. Tell them your dad is about to run for president. You're the son of Barack Obama. Now give me some pussy. And my thing is, if a woman is superficial or shallow enough to have sex with you just because she thinks that you're Barack Obama's son well you should be shallow and superficial enough to hit that ass and again that's the only time I'd advocate lying if you're just trying to get your freak on in a superficial non-committed way now I'm going to read an email from one of my listeners this is from Dez He's on my MySpace blog at MySpace.com slash Tariq underscore Nasheed. And Dez has a question. He says, what's up, Tariq? Just wanted to give you props on the flaky female Mac Lesson show. It was on point. I'm curious to know, what's your opinion on when you meet a woman who fits the mold of a dime and doesn't display the qualities of a copper chick, that means a low-budget female, how can us fellow players tell if we're kicking it with a female who has just as much game as we do with the end result of us brothers being on a treadmill going nowhere because we're both working off the same game? I've dealt with two totally different females, the email goes on to say, in the last six months, and both of them seem to have an edge to them that reflects a pinch of game. So drop us some game on dealing with the female with the same teachings, Dez. So basically, Dez wants to know how to deal with a female who seems like she has game of her own. Or a female player or a female Mac. Let me explain to you guys out there, man. A female has one game basically one trump card she can use on a player that's it it's not as deep as you guys try to make it seem a female has one trump card and one trump card only females are basically one trick ponies when it comes to the dating game it's very simple fellas the trump card she has is your desire to get her pussy that's it once you trump that game over you won if you can't trump that she's going to be able to run all types of game on you that's the only power women have over men a man's desire to get the ass or continuing to get the ass or continue to get the ass rather So if you let a female know and you know in your heart that you ain't tripping on her pussy, she can't run game on you. You don't give a fuck. You don't care about all that other shit she's saying. The only reason men sit up and let women play games with them, the only reason men sit up and let women flake out on them, the only reason men sit up and let women talk to them fucked up and crazy, the only reason men let women break them for all the money they have is because these men don't want to jeopardize their chances of getting some ass. One reason and one reason only. Once you trump that and let her know and let yourself know that her pussy ain't really all that. That there's four billion other pussies out there on earth. Game over for her. 
you trump the pussy card. She cannot run no more game on you. But are you mackish enough and strong enough to trump that sex card? That's the whole gist of the macking game, man. Being strong enough to trump that pussy card. And the way to do that is to have options. The best way to do that is to have a number of options. That's why you got to have other females on the sideline. You got to have you a team. You got to have bench warmers and all-stars. And sometimes your all-star players might get injured. You got to bring in the bench warmers. To keep the team going. To keep the game going. You can't put all your eggs in one basket, man. If somebody decides not to give you no ass or put some pussy over your face and not let you get it and run all types of game on you, man. You're going to be weak to that. You're going to be manipulated by that. But when you have other women waiting in the wings and a woman tries to play little bullshit games with you, you're like, look, while you're playing games, I'm going to be over here doing my thing, so call me when you get your mind right. Which in turns will make her get her mind right. Females like a dude in demand, guys. I want y'all to really get the gist of that concept. Women like a guy who is in demand. It's like even eating at a restaurant. If you go to an empty restaurant, you're like, damn, this must be a whack joint. Ain't nobody fucking with this spot. I'm not trying to fuck with it either. Nobody wants to eat in an empty restaurant. But if you go to a restaurant and it's jumping, you want to fuck with it just because it's jumping. It might not even be that good. But the fact that it's jumping... You want to fuck with it. Let me give you an example. I mean, there's a restaurant in Los Angeles in Beverly Hills. A very popular restaurant. It's just the end spot. Every celebrity's there. Everybody's there. It's a very good networking spot. It's a place called Mr. Chow's. It's in the heart of Beverly Hills. Very expensive restaurant. I mean, very expensive food very expensive but every celebrity and their mom is in there all the dimes are in there you go the waitresses look like supermodels mr Childs is off the hook as far as a social spot you have photographers outside just waiting on different celebrities to come and have dinner it's a popping spot everybody likes to go to mr Childs. the food is fucking garbage Everybody I know who has has been to Mr. Towns, they know the food is garbage. It's expensive, and the food tastes like hot ass on dough bread. The food at Mr. Towns is absolutely sickening. But the fact that everybody goes there, that the place is so in demand, people want to fuck with it anyway. And that's how you have to be with your game. Your game has to be so tight or you have to have the appearance that your game is tight and that so many people are down on your team, other people are going to want to get down. Other women are going to want to get down and see what's going on. When other women see that you have females on your team cooperating, they're going to be like, damn, this nigga got some shit going on. He must really have some shit going on that other women are feeling. So let me see what's going on. Now, if you're one of these, the cats like me who know your shit is fly. You know your importance and you know your value as a man. That even makes it all the more better. So again, fellas, you trump that sex card. You don't run up behind no ass. You don't put that much importance on sex from women. You trump the pussy card. A woman will not be able to run game on you. And I want you to take that same game to All-Star Weekend with you next weekend. And good luck and be careful out there. Now, while you guys up there in All-Star Weekend, I'm going to be down at Carnival in Rio de Janeiro doing my thing. So I'll pop my collar to you. Anyway, that's been today's episode of the Mac Lessons Radio Show. Don't forget to check out MacLessons.com to get the Mac Lessons DVD. I'll holler at you guys tomorrow. Bitch, 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 I'm flowing straight from the survival scroll. The survival scroll. The survival scroll. The survival.